Hello and welcome back to more Miles Edgeworth, uh, AS Attorney Investigation Miles Edgeworth. Last time, as you can tell, we, uh, got into some trouble with, uh, the Blue Badger, but not in criminal trouble. Well, I mean, I guess it is, but I'm not the criminal. Don't worry, I promise. I definitely did not blow up that one house in New Hampshire. Don't ask about it, because I know nothing about it. Sorry. Anyways, uh... Mm, looks like we get. Hmm. Hmm. I'm really. Uh, Oh, yeah. Mr. Edgeworth! Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth, the stadium, hurry, sir! This is supposed to be a hush-hush, but they found a witness at the stadium. A witness? You, what did we tell you about leaving your assigned post? Uh, the jig is up. Mr. Edgeworth, remember that I'm always waiting for you. Go get him, sir. These detectives sure look like they're enjoying themselves. It's not all fun and game, okay? Now let's head to the stadium and meet this witness. Oh. I thought there was a witness here. I don't see anyone. Mr. Edgeworth. Emma Sky! Hey, how are you doing? Long time no see. You are Miss Emma Sky, correct? Yeah, the one who got... If you don't remember... Yeah, Lana Sky. Um, she was in the first Ace Attorney game, and it's been a while since we've seen her, so I wonder how she's doing. Years ago, we stood in the same courtroom together as witness and prosecutor. I thought she had gone to Europe to study for Sinet. Or for cynics. I can't pronounce words. I can't believe you remember me, Mr. Edward. Of course I do. Oh, but who have you been? You've been... I mean, you look like to be in good spirits. Are you still studying abroad? You bet. More than anything, I want to investigate crime scenes significantly. Or scientifically. I've been studying up... I'm gonna see if I was right about that word. Hold on, sorry. Scientifically. Sorry. I've been studying non-stop every day to become a top nine for cynics. <laughs> sorry. God. That was an awful burp. For for yeah. But it's spring breaks, so and now I thought I'd come back for a bit. I see. Well. How you doing, Emma? I don't say I recognize you. You've really grown in these past few years. Please don't tease me, Mr. Edgeworth. I still know I'm a lo I have a long way to go. <laughs> you still got a long way to go. But I'm going to be a fourth forensic scientist. Someday. See, Mr. I mean, you seem to know Mr. Edward really well. Are you two acquainted? Your acquaintances? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Emma Scott. Nice to meet you. I'm studying abroad. Not to be a scientist. How about you? Oh, that's a great dream. My name's Kay Faraday. And I'm trying to become an unstoppable great thief. Uh, a great thief? Don't think too hard on it, Emma. It's not worth the trouble. <laughs> In any case, we have much to catch up on. Let me catch up on. Yes, we do. Oh, I mean, why are you here, Emma? I just stopped to decide to come back home for a spring break. Then I heard that you'd come back too, so I raced over. I had really wanted to welcome you back at the airport, but I just missed you. And how exactly did you know I was here? You're the power of science, naturally. Never, never underestimate what science can do. They used to, use to track your footprints and I followed them to you! This said it's the greatest. So wonderfully scientific. For the chemical on the ground and when you shine this special light on it. Seeing the footprints light up like an electrified noble gas in the glass too. It's almost like magic significantly. I mean scientifically speaking of course. <laughs> Scientists have never seen more ominous to 
me than at this very moment. I'd ask you about what you witnessed. Hmm, what are you talking about? Are you not the witness that uh, Detective Gumshoe told me about? Well, I did call for the great Detective Gumshoe earlier. He was practically yelling at me. I just would need your scientific doohickeys right now, pal, he said. What was that man thinking? Or rather, not thinking. Let me guess, there's been a murder, right? Yes, unfortunately. Some glint in her eyes. But I need to keep my mind focused on the witness. Scientifically calculating and thinking critically about this, and putting it in a way that transmits the feeling that I understand for you. Done. Yeah, it sounds like she knows what she's talking about, but really, she has no idea. Admittedly, I was slightly confused about me. Yeah. Badger's car. Yes, this is a uh, Renault Shearing pink model. Hmm. What's that off in the distance? Oh, hey, it's a pink badger. Badger, get. Badger, 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 badger. Just what does she see in these silly little things? I think this badger has something to say to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Are you, by chance, the witness I've been searching for? Sorry, but I don't speak badger dance. Uh oh. Is it Larry? Oh, it's old bag. Oh no! Ah, I can't take being inside that stuffy head anymore! You're. No. Why her? Why here? Why now? Yeah. First met this woman three years ago. She was a witness in one of my cases. Yeah, she was in... Oh, Turn About Samurai, I believe is what it was called. It was the third case of the first game. Oh, and I think she was at the end of Justice for All. Yeah. I don't know if she was in... Trials and Tribulations. I know there was another old man, but that was... Yeah, she wasn't in turn about Big Top, but I know she was at the end of... Because she had, like, the little laser gun. She had since gone out of her way to pop up at unexpectedly and cause me great grief. Hey, Jipoo! Why can't you understand what I was trying to tell you? I mean, really. I was trying so hard to keep the kids' dreams alive by staying in character. But you gotta pick up on what I was trying to convey to you. I was sick and tired of the roundabout way of talking, so I was just going to be direct. I had a bad feeling before, but this just made it official. So you're a friend of Mr. Edgeworth too, Miss Pink Badger? You can say that, but right now I'm just the Pink Badger, dearie. You may lose the part, but I know better than to trust my eye around this woman. Yeah, I think you should. I, I genuinely want to know, was she in Trials and Tribulations? I don't think she was. I, I looked at, like, just the thumbnails, because normally I would put either her, like, if she was in the game, I guess, but it's like, Wendy Old Bag, but you can call me Wendy or Granny or whatever suits your fancy. Nice to meet you, Miss Old Bag. I'm Kay Faraday. Hmm, why do I care about a young worker like you? Yeesh, I was just trying to be polite. Were you a security guard at one of the Gatewater Hotels the last time we met? Okay, so, literally, I think that was I go where I'm needed. I'm a very good at what I do, unlike the youth of today. Hey, fuck off. I work hard. I get called in on all the time to fill in when there aren't enough hands. But enough about me, Edgy Poo. I thoroughly dejected right now. I finally get the chance to see you again, and here you are talking with two young girls. Men are all the same. It doesn't matter how old they get. With young girls, I... Oh, God. Don't... Hold on, what did OJ say? Men are all the same, it doesn't matter how old you they get. They continue to shamelessly flirt with young girls. Why just the other day happened with my Yoon, who I had finally gotten to notice me. He went and got into an arranged marriage with an 18 year old. I don't see what he's in her at all. As they say, the going to take three years to ripen that girl. 
You seem to attract all sorts of interesting people, Mr. Edward. Okay, please, I'm paying you by all means. Do not provoke her any further. Are you forgetting about something, Mr. Edward? This person could be the witness. Honestly, I hope she isn't, but I don't think Faith is going to be too kind today. I saw what happened, and I saw the exact moment it happened. How's that? That's true, she is a witness. <sighs> I suppose I can ignore the old bag. Yes, it was just a little while ago. I seen it happen. I mean, I saw it happen right in front of me. The moment of the murder. You mean to say that you saw the wit- I mean, you witnessed someone being killed right in front of your eyes? Sounds like a pretty important piece of testimony to me. Oh, shit. Came to the stadium to take a short break. As I was resting, I happened to glance over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly, there was a lot of gunshot and the person who was shot fell to the ground. No time for experience, let me tell you. Sounds like we hit the jackpot, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Eh, I can't say to ignore what she has to say. Unfortunately. I say unfortunately you tacked on the end of that supposed to mean edgy poo. Well, anyways, let's see what we can find out from this old lady. like your average Joe is completely uninteresting and not worth fighting over. Hey, they're so boring that I didn't even remember much beyond that. But they, I mean, did they have any significant, uh, significant features? Oh my, don't tell me you're jealous of those two men. Hey, she's right. You do seem pretty worked up over them, Mr. Edward. I'm not worked up over anybody, and I'm not jealous. Alright, Edgy Poo. Those two were just... <laughs> Falls compared to a stallion like you. Oh my god. I thought I... Hold it! Clement, you have seen the exact moment when the murder takes place? That's when we think I'm a terrible racket when it was fired. Well, if I saw that guy again, I'm sure I could identify him for you. I mean, how do you expect me to remember anything without something to jog my memory? Self-centered, aren't we? Well, it, I mean, well, it was just somewhat useful. Her testimony also presented us with a new problem. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes. So, about this new problem. What's about the giant grin on your face? You want me to show you something really nice? No, thank you. Don't be so mean. I swear it's something you're gonna like. What's that gadget you're holding? A phone, Edgeworth? Oh, it's a secret weapon. Oh, come on, don't be like that. <laughs> oh, wow. Dark sky this evening. When no other bird dares take wing, one alone remains all seen. Now witness the true power of modern day Robin Hood. 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 What is this? The recreation of the murder based on the information I inputted into Little Thief. Oh, nice.
Nice. Blood. Take that. I was saying the crime, something specific should be here. Getting back to how did we do this that the other crime scene was not the real one. Oh, I get what we missed now. There's no blood on the ground here either. Alright, the fact that no blood here has that on the That's funny. Yeah, another group of guys. I had my fill of these things for a lifetime. Alright. I really did that, but only because it's you. Oh. Am I done investigating over here? Wait, hold on.
So there's a bloody suit somewhere. Aha! I'm so smart! It is not possible that the victim was wearing a costume. I really think that Mr. Decon was one of the cadavers. Well, we have a scientist. Hey, Emma. Mm-hmm. But he had to be wearing the uh, cop outfit, right? What else has caught our attention? Alright, so is she just gonna repeat it? Word for word. I take a short break. Do I have that evidence? Yep. Couldn't have been two men. One would have to be the badger. Oh my gosh, no, no rambles. Alrighty.
but the stage was packed up. Doesn't make any logical sense. I guess... So. Yeah, and then that just contradicts where the guy gets. That's a... <laughs> Not hard to see it coming even for a layman like me. We still need to resolve this real situation. It's not obvious the killer was on top of the stage naturally. That doesn't make any sense because where the bullet exit wound was through the shoulder, but I mean you had to shoot him from the. I mean, and the entrance was the stomach, so I had to shoot up. That's wrong. It should be the other way around, right? Or am I crazy? Unless he got shot through the shoulder. Let me look. Exit through. Oh shit. Hi, Lang. Agent Lang, how nice of you to join us. Well, I can't have you going around messing up my crime scenes. Hey, Ling, we discussed that the real scene of the murder is here at the stadium. I see, thanks. For what? I'm just trying to show you my appreciation for all the time you saved me. I knew that such a strange little toy could recreate a crime scene like that. Well, please, it's not a toy. You too. Yes, sir. I mean, sir, sir. There's tire tracks behind there. And there you have it. See, big boys like me don't need silly toys, little girl. Oh. And th now, this is a recreation. So what? Do you intend to assert that Officer Meekins is the killer? Of course. Even knowing that the crime took... Here, doesn't let him off the hook. Yeah, it does! Wait a minute! Yeah, it does! He was there for an hour! Nope, I'm going to use that logic I just had on that one, you fucking bitch. Why am I yelling so much? I'm so tired! Sorry. I'm not actually tired, I'm really invested. I'm just... I just gotta get up to sleep. And I'm not in Common Crow, I'm the Yadagaratsu, the Raven of Legend. Virtually your conclusion has yet to be tested, so let's see how well it holds up. Under the... Logical sense. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Agent Lang. I should have warned you that our recreation is incomplete. You cut in unexpectedly, after all. What's that supposed to mean? You said that the victim was shot from from above, correct? I hate to break it to you, but that's just not possible. Huh? Why not? Recall Mr. DeCone's body, specifically where the gunshot wounds were located. Actually, I didn't get that good of a look. Oh, well then. Bullet we'll entered Mr. Dukan's body in his abdomen region and exited through his right shoulder. His Marcus is in an angle shot from beneath the victim. Mm. Then, yes, our recreation had the victim being shot at an angle from above. A clear contradiction. You're discounting your own conclusion. No, this is point is the only flaw. This was a mistake a recreation. Killer and victim's location are switched. Location of the killer and the victims were wrong. I get it. I see what you're trying to say. I believe that the killer was the victim. We were standing in the opposite I mean opposite to what we initially thought. I, I mean it was a victim who was on top of the stage and he was shot by the killer.
what happened, it also explained the positioning of the gun one. Then what about the footprints? If the footprints don't lie, we can assume then that the killer also wore a costume. Okay, I'll try using that data instead. So there's two costumes. Judging by the fact that both the killer and the victim were wearing costumes, I'd say it was a killing between the two kidnappers. That would be the most natural conclusion. So it's not old bag, and it's... When you agree, Agent Lang? <laughs> well done, Mr. Prosecutor. But that also doesn't clear Officer Meekins of the crime. It doesn't. Or it does, actually. I ask you take another good look at the tire marks over there. The three marks are indi uh, indicatively of the blue badger mobile. That story Officer Meekins told about that shop on the wheels being stolen was just a lie. He drove the blue badger mobile here and committed the murder. Then he used a car to move the body to the garage in the Wild West area. He believes he moved the body with the car. That's right, it was Officer Meekins himself who pointed out. The three tread tire marks are very tight. However, the blue man is the only thing capable of creating such a pattern. I'm just gonna look at what I got. What was that? Was that you smashing, Dave? of the blue patch of the deal. Besides the blue bedroom of you, there are other ways that the body could have been Recall what the Wild Wild West area looked like. The only... I mean, there was the only... There's the only one. There's the only one that was here. That doesn't make any sense because there was three leaving out the bad badger, wasn't it? Okay, that was the right one. I was trying to think, like, is it that or is it the dead body? Because I was... Sorry, Agent Lang, but that's an impossible tale. And why is that? This tire mark could not have been left by Officer Meekin's blue badge mobile. Only one... I mean, one look at the car would have told you so. What proves that the blue badger had never been using the stadium? Alright, what do you mean? The pink bedroom mobile was here from the beginning. And there is no need for the bedroom mobile to be at any locate I mean at one location at the same time. If you like to give random answers to things that you don't mm. but I'm not so easily sidetracked by your weak logic. Mm. The tires Take that a good look at the tires. There was not a single drop of mud found on it. Mm. If this car had come to the backstage and left those tire tracks, then the lack of mud on these tires stands out as a particular envy. Then how do you explain the tire tracks, genius? Hey, I got it. What about Miss Old Bag's pink badger mobile? That'd be ridiculous. I was sleeping the entire time in these second seat tires. Yeah, I believe we can roll her out of someone into the camera. However, if there's one rovering star, as I recall. Oh, you mean the proto badger? That's right, there's only one more parking space inside the garage. And it's proved the existence of the Proto Badger Mobile. 
Agent Langer suggests you find this proto badger mobile pro uh, post haste. There's still, there's still uh, there must still be some incriminating evidence on it. Mm. Hey, did you hear something? Are you alright? Well, this is something. Looks like we found our kidnapping victim. Where were you all this time? Wild was with kidnappers. In the room next to the one I was held in? Ran away using underground and got lost. The kidnappers. Hmm? What is it? I can't understand what you're trying to say. The kidnappers escaped wearing costumes. See the faces of your kidnappers. No, I didn't see their faces, but two, one was a woman. woman. Quite an important piece of testimonies. Hey, what are you guys doing? Stop standing there and get the cops over here already. I'll even let you guys have what the kids said just now. Consider it a gift. Now, are you going to get out of the crime scene or am I going to have to rough you? Get me and get rough. You're not- I mean, nothing but a bully. Get him, Emma! Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go! Oh, no, 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 no. Not you. You're a very important witness for my case. I'm not about to let you get away that easy. Don't count on me to testify because I won't. Not for you. You will be in the thumbnail. That's right, I won't either. You hear me, you young whippersnapper? Hell yeah! Hey, calm down. There's no need for all this hostility. I just want to get a statement from each of you. I'm not going to rough either of you up. I give you my word. Now, come on, fair maidens. How do we... I mean, what do you say? Will you cooperate? Fair maidens? Come on, you little rascal. You should know a way to get into a woman's heart. Lang Z says, The passage of time is but a fleeting moment. And a young... I mean, a lady is young forever. <laughs> Trying to outdo as you poo with your sa uh, fancy schmancy saying. Let's get this over with so we're in a clear. I mean, so we're clear. I'm only interested in giving you my statement. Sure, just as soon as Mr. Prosecutor leaves us be. Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, shit. Oh, next episode's gonna go down, dude. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. God damn.